there is nothing to worry about. Be just fine. I'm your number one fan. He just goes a little mad sometimes. We all go a little mad sometimes. Whatever you do, don't fall asleep. Listen, asshole! No, you listen, you little bitch. Hang up on me again, I'll cut you like a fish. You know, it's Halloween. I guess everyone's entitled one good scare, huh? What an excellent day for an exorcism. I am Dracula. I am a child. I am the eater of wolves and of children. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Knights of Horror Radio. I am your host, Anthony Zaragoza, and we have a lot to talk about tonight. Big, big breaking news coming out of the haunt world today. Halloween Horror Nights in Hollywood and Orlando have announced their first joint IP property for the 2024 season, and we have the announcement video right here for you guys to watch. So let's react, let's take a look together, and let's see the newest announcement for Halloween Horror Nights 2024. A quiet place. I mean, it's already looking really promising. I love that. This is what I... Okay. Before we go any further, this is what I was talking about. This is what I loved about HHN 17's commercial. The originality behind it. We're doing something. I mean, they, they they do this every year for their IPs. I'll give them that. They do. Every single year they do this for their IPs. But I love the originality behind it because this invests me to want to go to the to the event. This invests me more and more every single time. So, uh, so far, I love the originality behind it. Uh, we're in a laundromat now, so I guess we're just taking a, uh, a quiet place anywhere, especially with uh, day one coming out pretty soon. Oh, that's cool. They actually used deaf people. That's really cool. I wonder how big of a role that's going to play in the maze. Now, that's something they're going to have to do to impress me with this one. Oh shit. Oh shit. If they hear you, they hunt you. A quiet place. Only at Universal Halloween Horror Nights, where horror lives. I mean, listen. I have to say, man, this is one that I remember, like, in 2019, right? At, at Midsummer Scream, they had this really fun, really cool panel. What's up, Scott? It's good. It's good. Uh, it's good to see you. It's good to hear from you. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't shout you out. Thank you for helping me earlier. I appreciate that. Um, what I loved so much about what they did with that panel was they had uh, Mike Aiello, who at the time was the creative director over there in Orlando for Halloween Horror Nights. Uh, that was really cool. And then to kind of have him on stage with John Murdy and Chris Williams, who are both the creative director and the art director over at Halloween Horror Nights here in Hollywood, they did this cool like little superstar panel and to really do like a, a little Q&A. And one of the questions they brought up in that was a lot of people for years, ever since this movie came out, has wanted to see A Quiet Place at Halloween Horror Nights. Now, the issue with A Quiet Place is how do you translate that into a maze? Now, it is a great movie, it's a scary movie, and it's a lot of fun, but what do you do to translate that into a maze? Apparently, this year they figured it out. It took them a few years to figure it out, but they but they finally figured it out. I don't know what we're going to be going through. I don't know how it's going to play out, but I'm excited for it. I cannot wait. A Quiet Place and A Quiet Place Part 2 were both very well uh, written and directed. 
uh, by John Krasinski. Yes, Jim from The Office directed and wrote both A Quiet Place and A Quiet Place Part Two, and I'm almost certain he's going to be in somewhat of uh, I don't I, I don't know if he's writing or producing or directing again for A Quiet Place Day One, um, which is the third film in the franchise. So I'm excited to see what this what this does. Now here's the press release right here. Um, for what they what they released today it says guests will need to be uh, to silence their screams when they enter the post-apocalyptic world of Paramount Pictures blockbuster movies A Quiet Place and A Quiet Place Part 2 and an all new chilling haunted house at Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights the terror of um excuri uh excuriating silence is set to begin Friday, August 3rd at Universal Orlando Resort and Thursday, September 5th at Universal Studios Hollywood. So, other breaking news within that, we got our confirmation date for opening day here in Hollywood. Um, September 5th, 2024 is opening night of Halloween Horror Nights. We cannot wait. Uh, tickets are now on sale right now, uh, including General Admission, Universal Express, after 2 p.m. day-night combo, early access ticket, uh, RIP tour, frequent fear, and ultimate fear passes as well. So those are on sale right now. You can buy your tickets now for Halloween Horror Nights. Do so. It does sell out quick. Highly suggest if you're going to go to Halloween Horror Nights, nothing less than Express because those lines do get crowded, and even Express lines are now getting crowded. Last year I saw an Express line at 45 minutes while the regular wait time for the general admission line was about three hours. So you pick and choose what you want to wait in. Anyway... Directed by John Krasinski and critically acclaimed for his suspenseful yet most silent storytelling, A Quiet Place and A Quiet Place Part 2 follow the a uh, Abot family as they try to survive the aftermath of sightless creatures with a sharp sense of hearing that draws them to their prey on anything that makes the slightest noise. Mirroring the science of the films, The Haunted House will embrace unique sound design, special effects, and adept, perf uh, adept performance performances of the scare actors to convey the ominous sense of dread depicted in the film. Consequential to the storyline, Halloween Horror Nights will incorporate the use of American Sign Language, ASL, for the first time ever within the A Quiet Place Haunted House to capture the authentic authenticity of the films. So that's really cool right there to find out that they're actually going to not only look and hire people who can actually sign, but they are going to tra they're, they're staying as true to the story as possible. I mean, to me, going into that, you really want to be immersed into what you're about to walk through. And for them to take A Quiet Place and really immerse you into that world, I'm excited for this. I mean, from what I'm reading, it, it sounds impressive. They're going above and beyond to bring this world to life, uh, to really immerse you into that world, and to really, honestly, show some appreciation and love for anyone who does sigh in real life. I think that is a really cool representation into this maze. So that's that's really awesome that they're doing that. Um, let's see. Fans will relive the tension that will come to life in the iconic scenes from the first two films, including traveling through the farmhouse that serves as the Abe family's uh, shelter and stepping into the root cellar where Evelyn Aba escapes to give birth as one of the creatures closes in. The snarls of the larger-than-life predators will follow guests at every spine-chilling turn, and guests must remember, if they hear you, they will hunt you. I think this is going to be a fucking amazing maze. I cannot wait for a quiet place to come to Halloween Horror Nights. And like we did say also within reading this article, tickets are now on sale for Halloween Horror Nights right now. We're actually going to take a look on the website right now to see what they have uh, for you guys available Uh for buying options. Now, if you look over right here, uh, we're on the main website for Universal Studios Hollywood. If you go on the Universal Studios uh, website at, for Halloween Horror Nights and you can choose one of four locations, uh, whatever is most convenient to you. Obviously, we're covering uh, Hollywood, California, so we're going to choose the Hollywood site. Obviously, A Quiet Place is on the page. It got announced, the first Maze announcement for Hollywood uh, today. Uh, I actually called this one. I, I, I said that there was probably going to be an announcement for Halloween Hornets this year. I didn't, or this week. I didn't know what it was going to be exactly. I just felt like with everything they've been building up and everything, this was the right time to finally drop it. I thought it was going to be Monday or Tuesday, but we got it on Thursday. Regardless, we got it, so that was really cool. Uh, select night, September 5th through November 3rd, 2024. So they are running a full two months of haunt, just about. Yeah, they are. Um, most like uh, a lot of people are this year. But, uh, yeah, they're going to be embracing that August date pretty soon. Like, Orlando is doing a full two months. Now, freaking uh, Universal Horror Nights is doing a full two months for their actors as well. And it looks like they're running uh, Wednesday through Saturday, or Wednesday through Sunday in most of October. 
and then it looks like Thursday through Sunday from September and the last weekend of November and the first weekend of October. So it's going to be a very intense season for their uh, for their talent this year, especially because, you know, this event sells out, and it sells out to the point where you cannot really walk comfortably, in my opinion. But uh, So it looks like General Mission is starting at $77 this year. Uh, I don't know if prices were raised or not. It doesn't look like it. It looks kind of similar uh, to last year's prices. They may have gone down slightly. I, I don't know. I, I got to compare last year's to this year's. But it looks like we have $209. It starts at $209 for Universal Express, depending on the night you go. Uh, Universal Express Unlimited, uh, 249 it starts at. Uh, after 2 p.m. day-night combo starts at 117 After 2 p.m. day-night Universal Express starts at 349 RIP Tour starts at 389 depending on the night you go to. And, of course, the controversy of last year's Halloween Horror Nights ticket buying options. The Halloween Horror Nights early access ticket is back, it looks like, this season. It looks like it was a huge success for them money-wise last year, so they brought it back for the 2024 season. That is going to start at $10 for you, depending on the night you go. Uh, and it gets you, gets you in an hour and a half before the event actually begins to get down to that lower lot and hit a maze or two. At this point of how packed it gets, that's all you can really do down there. Uh, before the event starts, at least. And, of course, your frequent fear passes. you got, of course, the classic frequent fear pass. It starts at $209. That gets you up to 33 nights of access to Halloween Horror Nights. And then you have the ultimate fear pass, which starts at $329. And that gets you into every single night of Halloween Horror Nights. Both of those are general admission experiences. Now, let's take a look at what we, what we have as far as ticket options go and how expensive it gets later on. Uh, as we go on into the season. Now we're going to start here at the general admission and work our way down, but it's looking like we're getting up to $99 as, as the most expensive for September. Uh, cheapest starting at 77 So it looks like if you're trying to save that money and you can only really, uh, you know, in, in your in your budget is the, the general admission ticket, September is going to be your days to go. It, it, it's looking like the most expensive is going to be the last Saturday, which is $99, but you're looking at anywhere from 77 to $92 uh, roughly for a ticket. Now, as we go into October, we're looking at more expensive price dates. See, as you see, it looks like it goes up. The minimum you're going to get as far as a good ticket price is $82, and that's at the beginning of October, that Thursday and Friday, or just that Thursday at least. Um, and, but throughout the rest of October, the minimum you're going to get is $84, it looks like, and then it goes down up to $87, uh, $89, $99, 107 You're looking at the general mission ticket in October. And then that last weekend for November is looking really nice, $92 for that Friday, $99 for that Saturday, and $87 for that final night. Yeah, it's funny. I'm reading this right now, and it's so, it, honestly for me, it fucking feels like I'm a damn uh, a weatherman the way I'm fucking reading it. But it is insane to see these prices go up more and more and whatnot. So let's see what else we have um, going on for the tickets as far as price changes goes. Now, um, you know we're really really diving into uh, what it, it usually costs these days to go to Horror Nights right now, and Every year, they usually go up in price. Now, we're looking at Universal Express. It looks like September is probably your cheapest time to do it that first like weekend, that Thursday and that uh, Sunday, $209 for Express. Uh, and it's looking like it's going from $219, $229, $239, $249, $259, $279, $289 that final Saturday in September. And as we go into October, I can only imagine it's going to get more expensive. Yeah, look, we start at $269 as the cheapest. Uh, then we go to 289, 299, going over to 309 at the most expensive in those Saturdays bleeding in towards the end of October. Um, on Halloween night, though, 279, which is going to be on Thursday this year, so that's not too, too bad uh, for an express pick ticket. And then that, was that, that final weekend, you're looking at 299 for that Saturday, 289, and 279. Um, so, you know, express, I've always said that with how Horror Nights is this day and age, you, you need Express. At the very least, you need Express because it's just too damn crowded, too damn packed. Um, and honestly, and it's sad to say this now, Express will probably just barely get you through everything um, like it should, at least for mazes and shows. I'm not counting rides. I'm just counting mazes and shows. It might just barely get you through anything, everything these days. So consider Express or higher. Um, I always tell people to start saving up because it is a little pricey. Now let's look at this Universal uh, Express Unlimited, which gets you Unlimited Express, 
to every ride, every haunted house, every attraction that they have open for Halloween Horror Nights. Um, that's just a description. But with that, uh, we're starting at two, at 3.29, 3.39, and 3.19 for those final weekends. I can only imagine it's going to be pretty uh, expensive going into October. But we're starting at 2.49, uh, so it's going to be your cheapest. Always, it's looking like with every ticket, your cheapest option is to go in September. Um, if you're going to go anytime in October or November, just consider that it's going to get more pricier as it goes up. So we're going to have 249, 259, 269, 279, 289, 299. Um, we don't, we're just not even going to 309. We're skipping straight to 319 and 329 for that Friday, that final Friday and Saturday combo right there at the end of September. Now we're looking into October and I can imagine it's going to get worse. Yeah. 309, 329, 339, uh, 349. Uh, it looks like 349 is the cap for the Universal Unlimited Express, so consider that as well if you want to go through things multiple times. If there's going to be a certain property this year that you really like and you want to go and see it multiple times, a certain house you want to go through a second time, just consider all the factors because it can really benefit your trip and maximize your experience to, to see things more than once, especially if you don't go to the event all that much. Um, after, two night, after 2 p.m. day-night combo is a, a, a fan favorite, especially if you want to go see like Super Nintendo World and and whatnot, um, visit the daytime attractions and stuff. Starts at 122, uh, oh, I'm sorry, this is October, let's go back to September. Starts at 117, uh, goes up to 127, 142, 137. Uh, it looks like the most expensive in September is 159, uh, which is that final Saturday. That final Saturday is bleeding into October, so they're going to take every bit of advantage they can because it's getting closer and closer to Halloween season for the general audience. Uh, 122, 142, 159, 144, 127, 167. Uh, so yeah, it, October is going to be your worst time to go. That's why it gets darker and darker because of the prices. 142, 159, 147. And it seems like that last weekend because, you know, I know a lot of people want to get their fixes and stuff. So, you know, um, I'm excited that <laughs> Haunt's bleeding back into November again because uh, I, I did miss that for a little bit. I think we experienced it in 2019 and it was pretty fun, but yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it. Um, we'll go with the RIP tour, and then we'll kind of we'll kind of go from there, uh, and we'll move on to our next segments. But yeah, a lot of news coming out of Halloween Horror Nights today. A, a ton of news. I mean, look at so the RIP. Uh, first and foremost, before we look at cost, I have to say I I actually experienced uh the RIP last year. 100% worth the money. It really is. All you can eat buffet. Uh, beverages like uh, sodas and water are free throughout the night. There's a dessert buffet you can go back to and get some snacks later on. Um, you get pri your own priority entrance to every single attraction, which I think is amazing. Unlimited times. Uh, we went through Last of Us like two times, I think, that night, and we had our own entrance. We waited five minutes in line. Um, so it was awesome. I, I highly suggest if you can fork out the extra money, try the v uh, the RIP experience. It is 100% worth the money. And... Uh, I highly suggest it. But you're looking at uh, 389 for that first weekend, which is going to be obviously your cheapest, going as high as 469 that last Saturday. And let's go into October, which I imagine is going to be even worse. Yeah, you're looking at $500 now for a fucking RIP experience. $509, bro. I know you're going to be throwing out a little money, but I guarantee you this is this is top of the line VIP. But you got 449, 469, 489, 479. Like it, it is. It's a lot of money you're forking out at the end of the day, but it's it's well worth it. Four seventy nine, uh, five hundred dollars just about for that last Saturday in November, and then four fifty nine for that last night. It is insane to see all these ticket prices, man. And how do you even go about affording them in this day and age? You know what I mean? I guess if you truly want the best experience at Halloween Horror Nights, you're gonna have to pay a little bit more money. That's just as simple as that, man. It it's. It's kind of sad that it's come down to that, but it is what it is. They got to make their money if they want to continue to produce some of the best um, pretty much shot-for-shot -shot remakes of these films that they possibly can. I guess this is the way they bring in that money so they can continue to add new things. Like I, I think Monster Ocean was amazing last year because of all the animatronics. Same thing with Chucky. So if they're going to be kind of doing more of that and kind of really changing the game of, of animatronics and stuff and, and just how they do haunt and how they perceive haunt like by all means go for it it is what it is 
Um, I'm excited to see what else gets announced so, so far. I mean, this this announcement for Quiet Place is a huge one. It's going to be the first two movies. Looking forward to that. There's a lot of rumors of Insidious coming to Halloween Horror Nights. We're, we're really looking closely on that. Uh, I just seen a rumor recently about uh, the 25th anniversary, I think, of the original or the uh, remake of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, um, is. Uh, potentially uh, a thing that can be happening, or the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, because I guess one of the facades looks like uh, identical to an abandoned meat packaging factory factory in Texas, which is similar to the one they used in that 2003 reboot. So that I mean that's on the horizon of things potentially. You know, there's there's a lot of talk right now in Halloween Horror Nights, and I feel like the community more than ever has has grown, and you're starting to see so many people on TikTok, on Instagram. Everything just talk about Halloween Horror Nights. People are loving Halloween Horror Nights. I think that's kind of why I don't talk about it as much unless we get like a major announcement or something. Like I, I'll do a spec map thing every now and then. I know we, we've been bouncing around Halloween Horror Nights here and there, but the one that I'm excited for obviously the most this year is Dark Harbor. I mean, Dark Harbor coming back is huge, and I'm excited to see what they do with that. I'm excited to see how that goes for that opening year. Uh, that return year and and just to see w what they have in store for the future of Dark Harbor. Hopefully it's a success. It's it's first year back. Uh, I've been talking to a lot of people about it and, and a lot of people are excited to go back um, or to just visit it again. So I'm excited to see what they do with with Dark Harbor this year. Uh, that's probably like the top of my hype list for haunts this year. Um, so I'm I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to seeing what Knotts does this year. This Knotts should have another good year, but. We'll see what happens. Okay, when we come back, we're going to talk about uh, the newest Alien Romulus trailer. We're going to react to that and, and give our thoughts about it, uh, as well as talk about the latest Midsummer Scream news, because there's a ton of news that came out with celebrity guests, uh, panels, Hall of Shadow updates. I want to talk about all that with you guys when we return right here on Knights of Horror Radio. But first, Mortalis, The Metal Way. The theme song of the Knights of Horror, if you've ever turned on our channel and watched the channel trailer, that is the song you hear. Uh, Mortalis was super kind enough to let me use that song to kind of represent the channel as a whole, and it was a great way to get them exposure. I'm going to play the Metal Way right now. Metal Way is a great song, um, and if you love that kind of big four, you know, Metallica, Slayer, Anthrax, Megadeth sound, you're going to love Mortalis, man. So here's Mortalis with the Metal Way.
ladies and gentlemen, the almighty Mortalis on Knights of Horror Radio. Mortalis has been very good to us in the past, man, and I, I, I owe them a ton for coming on the show. Uh, it's the least I can do to advertise their music on our radio station, on our live stream, whatever you want to call this. There's a lot of factors that play into what I'm calling this um, and whatnot, but I am having, I have to say first and foremost, guys, um, you know, we, we did a show on Monday, and I wish it would have went, like, a lot better. It wasn't that the talent on the show and, you know, we weren't good or anything because I think we had a fun show. What was the problem was I was having a ton of internet issues. I think it's usually when I go into Discord because I'm, I'm using something, and I guess I'm using more, like, data to kind of – Wi-Fi to kind of talk with them that I always have that issue, um, which sucks because Monday was a super good show. So today is the proper episode five. I owe the boys a video. We're going to do a video pretty soon, hopefully, uh, when I get on day shift where we can break down our dream HHN mazes, our dream HHN lineup, because the boys had a really good uh, lineup for a lot of things, and I think uh, that video needs to get out there. I do apologize for the many technical difficulties we did have on Monday, but uh, when they did announce Quiet Place tonight or today, I knew I had to go live and talk about it. Um, because that was exciting for me. I, I was looking forward to that. I've been wanting to see A Quiet Place at Halloween Horror Nights for a while. Don't know how it's going to be done, but from the sounds of it, of what they're going, the extent they're going to try to make that possible, I am looking forward to it. I really hope it goes into a soundstage. I should bring that up now. I think if it goes into a soundstage, you can control your audio and everything better. Sound stages were built to be fucking soundproof. So, I mean, that's that's my opinion. If you're going to do this maze right, I would put it specifically in the Walking Dead location because that is a perfectly controlled environment, in my opinion. All right, moving on to the next topic. I'm excited. I uh, hope you guys are excited. Oh, let's talk about one last thing. I, I did ask you guys on social media what you guys thought about the newest um, announcement for Halloween Horror Nights, and we got a ton of responses. We're going to go through um, everything and, and see what everyone says, how everyone feels. Uh, we're going to start here with Chris. Christopher says, I don't think this was a good choice considering the movie was 90% mute. Now, I think that was the issue they had years ago, but I think they figured out a way around it. I think that they're going to they're gonna deliver. I, I think just, just let, let the process play out. I've learned the hard way to not judge a maze based off said property. I judged and expressed my hatred for the weekend maze. I'm still not a fan of the music. I, I just that's just not that's just, that's not my music taste. I like like a song or two, but that's about it. I, I'm just not really a big fan of, of his music. The maze, however, was a really good maze. I, I, I will not deny that. There there was that maze had a lot of really good detail to what they needed to bring to life. I had watched the source material prior to that. I'm still going to follow by the statement, unless you actually sit down and watch those videos, I still think the music does not sound like something of a horror movie, unless you actually watch those videos. Because when I'm listening to music most of the time, I'm just listening to music. But that's just me. It, however, I'm not going to lie, it did work in a maze, and it worked well. Um, so if they were to do another week in a maze, yes, of course, I would not be the biggest fan of it because I'm not a fan of the music it's not going to stop me from going through it or, or giving it a shot though I, I've learned that the hard way and I've, I've said it before especially when I started doubting that maze and I'll say it again if I'm wrong about something I will come out and admit it and that is something that I was wrong about and I admitted that it was actually a good solid maze I went through it a few times that year and that's because I actually knew a few people a few friends that were working inside the maze that I wanted to go support but it doesn't deny the fact that I still went through it a few times. So we'll wait and see how Quiet Place does work out. I mean, I don't know. It sounds like from what I read from the press release, they got a lot of tricks and stuff up their sleeve that they are working with, brand new stuff that they've never tried before. And I'm kind of giving the okay for Horror Nights to do that because they've done that in the past and it's delivered. Same, like, look at Monsteros, look at Chucky. That was majority, like, animatronics, and there was, you know, animatronics mixed with actors. That was it worked perfectly. It, it really did good. Chucky was at the bottom of my anticipation list because I just I've never watched the show. I didn't want to put the time to watch the show, and it actually I walked out very shocked of that maze. So it was it, it actually probably made my top five. Um, but regardless, uh, I think we all give it a chance. 
our good buddy Rob the Howling Hour himself. Go follow his page. He's a great photographer. Guy's doing a lot of stuff in the haunt community. Guy posted a short about this maze today, too. I was very uh, surprised and very proud to see that because uh, he rarely does stuff like that. So I'm glad to see that he's poking into that more. Good for you, Rob. Very proud of you. Different, but I think it's going to be a really good house. Rob, I couldn't agree more. I think it is going to be a great house, and um, I cannot wait to see what they bring to life. Uh, Dale in L.A. replied, uh, the headphone thing is cool. Yeah, I, I don't know what he's specifically saying about that. I, I, I don't remember reading anything about headphones, but if they do something like that where they kind of take away your, your hearing even more, I mean, that'd be pretty fucking pretty fucking cool. Um, I think that would make the the maze even scarier for me because if I can't hear what's going on, then they jump out at me, I'm more likely to get scared more. So I think that could be a really cool approach to that. I'm uh, I'm definitely on board for what that uh you know that's going to be about. Emma, Emma put execution is really important. Emma, I couldn't agree more with you. Execution is very important when it comes to any maze. Um if you're bringing something to life, you want to execute that perfectly. You want to immerse those guests and those people into that space. You really have to really execute this well. I mean, from start to finish. When I get there, I have to know what's what am I walking into? What's going to happen? Is the first thing I'm going to see is the the sun dying? Because if that's the case, I mean, what a fucking execution right there. That is that's how you start a damn maze. <laughs> if you're gonna go full on with it, is the beginning of that fucking movie. Uh, I know it's not an easy scene to watch, and everyone didn't want that to happen, myself included. But if you're going to immerse me into something and show me how serious we're about to be when we walk through this maze and what we're about to see walking through the maze, that's how you get me right there. That opening scene, I'm going to be like, holy shit, they really pulled that off and they really did it. Wow, okay, I'm excited to see what the rest of this maze has to offer. That's how you open that fucking door right there, in my opinion. There's probably a million other different routes and ways you can go, but that's how I would open that door. I was like, well, we're going to recreate that scene. It might be a little controversial, but it's part of the film, and uh, we're giving you the experience of the film. So you're going to see everything that they saw in the film. Just about. And then uh, we had uh, Z Riggs 5 respond with, imagine the whole maze just being silent. That would be very scary of its own, too. Silence of its own is very eerie. Um, and I, I truly believe, like, if you're in a silent era, area by yourself, it's just, it, it's just, it's eerie. You feel like someone's watching you. You feel like, um, you know, you feel like you're being watched. Like, you know, you don't know what's going on. You get paranoid. Uh, when you start losing your senses and not being able to hear and the whole maze being silent and you don't know what's going to happen, what's going to jump out of you. Every now and then you're going to hear a scream here or there, but yeah, that'd be interesting to see if they can pull that off. All right, so that was everything that I got response-wise on Instagram. Thank you all to re who responded. Really appreciate each and every one of you. Um, quiet place, we're just going to have to wait and see. Uh, I'm hoping maybe Murdy will elaborate it a little bit more at, at his panel at uh, Midsummer Scream. We will see between now and that panel what gets announced. Uh, and I, I'm probably going to make an assumption that he might announce an original there um, just because it's like an exclusive for California. So we'll see what happens. Looking forward to it, and I can't wait. Now, something else I'm looking forward to coming out, I believe, this summer. Um, and it's been on my radar for a while. I'm a huge fan of the franchise. And can't wait to see what they do with this next one. And that is Alien Romulus. Now, Alien Romulus looks so amazing. I mean, they're taking it back to the roots of what Alien was. And, um, you know, I, I love the direction they're going with it. It feels like a classic Alien movie. Uh, Fede Alvarez is directing it. If you don't know who Fede Alvarez is, the 2013 Evil Dead remake was him. And Don't Breathe was him. Two uh, great fucking horror movies, in my opinion. Um, and Evil Dead 2013 remake was very fucking gory. I can only imagine with what Ridley Scott did with that first Alien movie, he is going to try to mirror that, if not exceed that. From what I've seen with this trailer, from the trailers that we've gotten... From behind the scenes, there's been a ton of behind the scenes that have been coming out. The animatronics that they're using, how practical they're going. I think this is probably lined up to be one of the greatest Alien movies ever made. 
Now let's watch the trailer and we'll talk about it a little bit more. Some things that we noticed, some things that we liked, and uh, we'll see uh, we'll see how it all goes. All right, here we go. This is Alien Romulus. I mean, I love the execution of what they did with the this sound really effects for uh, your life. for this for this for this trailer. You know, it just it blends everything in the the, the, the kind of vibe they're going for with this movie. This is all I'm gonna figure out of this. Not to mention, you know, 20th Century being owned by Disney now, and Disney's still like, yeah, we want to continue doing this fucking franchise. We know this movie's going to make us a lot of fucking money. I couldn't agree more. Now, hearing the beep, that's traumatizing. I used to play the fucking Alien Isolation game, and... Oof. Now, that's an interesting... Like, the fact that they... That, that's new for the Alien franchise. I've never seen that. What's happening? I hate those things so much. Anyone that knows me knows that I hate facehuggers, so this is going to be a movie to fucking watch for me. And, like, look how close up and shit they gotten this time around with this franchise. Like, this franchise has grown so much since then. Like, look at that shit, bro. Look how awesome, like, the way this movie's filmed. In space, no one can hear you scream. That was the original catch line for the original Alien film. And now look at that. That's old school with that shit right there. I love that. This is a perfect blend between the next generation and the old generation right here. Are you sure you wanna do this? Like, look at the Alien, bro. When's that coming out? Do we have a release date for that? August 16th, three days after my birthday. Who's taking me to see fucking Alien Romulus in theaters? Let's go see it. Let's go do it. Let's do it right now. Alien Romulus. Let's let's book it everything. I think that looks fucking spectacular. Alien, Alien as a franchise is terrifying of its own. I think it's one of the fucking scariest franchises out there. Face huggers, terrifying. Fucking the aliens themselves, terrifying. The xenomorphs are just absolutely disgusting and terrifying um what i loved what they executed most with that trailer was the fact that we went from it's a modern day alien movie but it looks like it was a filmed like how it was in the fucking 70s and the 80s like it has that same vibe it has that same look it has that same like feeling to it that we all know and love with alien and Fede Alvarez is recreating that fucking image. Ridley Scott producing this thing. Re you know, Ridley Scott's fucking hands-on with this shit as well. That's that's Ridley Scott's baby right there. You know, and and it's it's really cool to see that they're they're carrying on the franchise. We were we were doing something for a little bit with the Prometheus uh, and the Alien Covenant, which was kind of that prequel to kind of to establish who the aliens were, where they came from, all that stuff. You know, we had the Alien franchise. We did a little Alien vs. Predator. Aliens come out in the comics. He's done crossovers with a lot of characters in the comics. You know, and now we're seeing a new Alien movie. Now, I don't know if this is going to take place um, in the same timeline as Alien, if it's going to take place the same timeline as Prometheus, or if it's going to be its own thing and just reboot itself and go from there and start a new franchise. I'm excited to see where this new Alien movie goes, where it leaves it open to. Alien and Predator are both owned by 20th Century Studios. That means the mouse owns them both. So they could do a proper Alien vs. Predator movie right now. They're doing really good stuff right now with Predator with Prey, given that backstory like thousands of years ago, coming to Earth for the first time, and then freaking doing what they do best, which is hunt. And then now you got Alien Romulus coming out, and that's kind of a new reimagining, a new redefining of the genre, introducing a new audience to the Alien franchise. Alien and Predator are going to be here well, until the day we fucking die. Those characters are iconic. Prey was legit. Prey was probably, in my opinion, one of the best Predator movies since Predator 2. Like, and that's saying a lot. Like, I loved everything they executed with Prey. It was, it was great. The fucking Predators were aggressive. That's what I want to see in a Predator movie. That's what I want to see in an Alien movie. I want to see these motherfuckers aggressive. 
Fede Alvarez just shocked the shit out of me with that trailer saying, yeah, we're going to make our fucking alien movie aggressive. Look at how these face huggers are fucking attaching onto people and look how quick and aggressively they're doing it. That's what I want to see in an alien movie. I cannot wait to see this movie. August 16th can't get here any sooner. I am going to see that one in the theater. Probably see that in the Dolby Theater because I love the Dolby experience, louder speakers and everything, and I need that for a movie like this because you know there's going to be a lot of those quiet moments that just get loud all of a sudden, those amazing jump scares that Alien is known and uh, loved for. So I'm excited for Alien Romulus. I hope you guys are having that one. Mark that on your calendars, August 16th, 2024, Alien Romulus. Switching gears over to Midsummer Scream now, our favorite Halloween and horror convention. This is the best Halloween horror convention. This is the Comic-Con of Halloween and horror conventions. A fuck ton of news has come out in the last week. I cannot keep up. I've even been fucking text messaging Rick, Rick West like, dude, you're killing me, bro. I'm trying to keep up and I can't. <laughs> um, a lot of celebrity announcements, a lot of panel announcements. We're just going to go through. There's not going to be any specific order. There's going to be probably like a celebrity, celebrity, probably panel, celebrities, panel. Hall of Shadows, who knows. We're going to go through all this, check it out, what we're excited for, and uh, what we're looking forward to. So let's take a look at what's new with Midsummer Scream for 2024. Now, first and foremost, for our celebrities, uh, we got Derek Myers. Derek Myers is most famous for playing the stuntman slash actor for uh, Jason Voorhees in the Friday the 13th remake in 2009. And as of more recently, he was the Swamp Thing in the CW TV show that was created by James Wan. Fucking great show. I don't know why they canceled it. But Derek Myers will be there uh, signing all weekend long. So if you guys are fans of Derek Myers, go check it out. I even might meet him because, you know, Swamp Thing was shit. And I liked his uh, his Friday the 13th. Uh, we got a panel announcement. Pasta and Billy going to be doing casting and auditioning scare actors. It's going to be a... Uh, class announced. It's actually a class, so you can pretty much see what it takes to casting and doing auditions for scare actors. So you can maybe apply it into your own independent haunts, or if you're a professional haunt, you're looking at new ways to audition and, and cast people. This might be the workshop for you. So check that out. Pasta and Billy hosting it. That should be a cool one. The Spirits and Legends is the Hall of Shadows theme this year, and it is being done. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Hall of Shadows, Dark Zone Returns, Celebrating Spirits and Legends. So that is the, uh, the, um, that is the, 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 uh, the theme for the Hall of Shadows this year, being built by Fear Farm, uh, setting the stage perfectly for what lies ahead beyond its borders. You're going to expect stuff from Drek Society, which we already talked about, uh, last week. They're going to be doing a Scooby-Doo haunt. I'm excited for that shit. That's going to be awesome. Uh, the Haunt with No Name, Yet, The Pizza Planet Truck and Arts Sideshow, Raw of the Dead, Santa Ana Haunt, Realm of Shadow, Haunted Car Wash, Cal Haunts, um, Halizondo Haunt, and 13th Floor Entertainment Group, all going to be in the Hall of Shadows, of course, with a performance Saturday and Sunday with Decayed Brigade. That should be a lot of fun. And the biggest news of all in the Hall of Shadows Lionsgate Horror will be doing an, an entire immersive experience called The Gears of Fear, exploring the legacy of Lionsgate Horror, and that's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be the first walkthrough experience ever created for the Hall of Shadows by a major movie studio, and is one of the most highly anticipated attractions at Midsummer Scream this year. If you guys don't know Lionsgate, that's the company behind Saw, um, as well as a buttload of other uh, horror movies that I just can't name off the top of my head right now. Saw is the most famous one that comes to mind when I think of it. But you can expect to see a lot of stuff from their catalog of horror movies probably in this experience. That should be a lot of fun. Looking forward to that. That's going to be um, a, a fun time to walk through. I'm, I'm very excited to see what that is going to uh, have inside. Um, also, if you guys are trying to stay in the area at Long Beach, discounted hotel rooms for Midsummer Screams are running low. So book soon. Rates and more are at MidsummerScream.org. Trust me, they have the best rates for the hotels in the area right there. Highly suggest it. Uh, we've done it last two years. I don't know if we're doing it this year because we have not talked about it. We have not – or anything. So it might, need, but might not be a no-go for us this year, but we'll see. The stars of Paranormal Activity are going to be at Midsummer Scream this year. This is huge. Uh, we got Kate Featherson. And Micah Sloat, they were the stars for the smash hit 2009's Paranormal Activity. 
uh, which, of course, Kate has been in uh, the first four films, so that's going to be a lot of fun. They're going to be... Um, they're gonna be doing a, uh, they're gonna be doing a meet and greet, so it's gonna be hosted by Paramount Scares. So yeah, if you guys are fans of Paranormal Activity, definitely take advantage of that, cause I don't ever hear or see them at any convention, so this might be a big deal right now. They might be, uh, this might be a rare appearance, so uh, take advantage of it. Uh, this is gonna be Fear Farms Dustfall Hollow. Um, this is one of the attractions that's gonna be inside the Fear Farm. Uh, and they've been creating the, uh, of course, the entry portal, which is the Fear Farm Dustfall Hollow. Once a thriving boomtown, Dustfall Hollow has a sweetheart of the Old West, that is, until a team of prospectors mined and veined a silver strait into a cavern far beneath the surface of the earth, a sub uh, subterranean chamber wh where an unspeakable horror and had been waiting in the darkness for hundreds, perhaps thousands of years. The evil consumed the town, its people, and every anyone that dared visit in the years that followed, creating the perfect portal into the Hall of Shadows, the realm of spirits and legends. That sounds pretty fun. Kind of sounds familiar, but it sounds pretty fun. However, I'm looking forward to it. Cannot wait to see what that's about. This is cool. I, I don't know if they've ever done this in the past. They probably have because I don't really get the opportunity to... I don't do photo ops very much. I go for mostly autographs. They are doing uh, f pro photo ops at Midsummer Scream by Pose. So you can now uh, pre-order those right now for any of the celebrities that are going to be there. It looks like a pretty good stack of celebrities. So if you want to take any professional photos with these people pre-order your photos now that way you don't have to worry about buying them the day of the event and you'll already be ready to go and ahead of the game guarantee doing stuff like that makes your life way easier that should be a good one and tony todd I, i'm trying to meet tony todd this year i think either her either him or uh, elvira those are my two options right now uh here it is the gears of fear explore the legacy of horse so this is the concept art of it uh the only reason like i said i said saw because Jigsaw is in the, in the front of it, and Plague Productions is actually the ones that are going to be building and designing this. Um, so here it goes. Gears of Fear, explore the legacy of Lionsgate Horror in partnership with John Cook and Plague Productions. So, right off the bat, cookbook classic. Haven't even been through it. It's just a cookbook classic already. It's just, that's it. Uh, this makes the first time a major motion picture studio has stepped into uh forward to present a terrifying walk through attraction at the Hall of Shadows at Midsummer Screen. Prepare for terror at every turn and take a horrifying journey through the Gears of Fear maze, a torturous immersive experience packed with scare uh, scenes from iconic Lionsgate's films and fresh scares for, uh, from upcoming horror releases. A twisted, bone-chilling nightmare awaits for all those who enter. So you're getting not only a visit of the past, but you're getting a preview of what's to come next in the future. That is awesome. Um, I'm looking forward to this. This is the, probably the, like, like they said, this is probably the most hype thing that I'm looking forward to at, uh, Midsummer Scream. And I hope that if this is successful this year, it keeps their partnership with Lionsgate going. It seems like they've had Lionsgate in the past. They did a huge Saw panel last year. They even, uh, dropped the Saw trailer that day. That was huge for, for Midsummer Scream to get the Saw, uh, you know, exclusively the Saw trailer there. Uh, I thought that was huge for them. Uh, they had a Saw experience for Saw X. That was really cool. We got invited to go go uh, check that out. That was a lot of fun. Um, it had a lot of like the screen used props and, and traps that they used from the past movies and a lot of the new stuff from the new movie. So that was really cool. And then they announced, of course, uh, with that, with more Saw going on, uh, Fright Fest announced that they were doing a Saw X maze. So that was really cool. It was a huge weekend for Saw that year. And, and Lionsgate was huge on, on board with that. And it seems like Lionsgate and Midsummer Scream have a good relationship, so I'm hoping that just improves and keeps bringing us the best experiences at Midsummer Scream. Like I said, this is slowly becoming, and it already has become, the Comic Con of fucking horror and, and Halloween. This is it right here. Like, this is where you go if you want to get all your fucking information for the haunts, for horror, uh, and some of the best vendors uh, in the in the world and, and best haunt creators in the world are there. So, you know... Don't miss Midsummer Scream. Trust me, you don't want to. Uh, hiring event. How to conduct a seance. Instructor by Wene Watt. That's going to be another workshop if for all those who are interested in conducting a seance uh, properly and safely. This is probably the best person maybe to go to and check out. So check that out on Sunday, July 28th at Midsummer Scream. That should be a lot of fun. Drex Society doing Scooby-Doo and the Carnival of Chills. We talked about this one. This is going to be a lot of fun. 
can't wait to go. This is also on my hype list right here. Direct Society always puts on good good work, so you know it's going to be a big weekend. And that's all of our Midsummer Scream news as of right now. I'm going to refresh the page just to make sure they didn't upload anything else. Oh, here we go. Create uh, crafting the immersive haunt. Uh, being put on by Kevin Wetmore, a six-time Bra uh, Braun Stoker Award nominee and the founder and showrunner of The Haunting of Hannon, an um, interactive immersive haunt in the university library. Now it's in its 12th year. He is also the author of over a, th a dozen books and directed the Los Angeles premieres of Evil Dead the Musical and Toxic Avenger the Musical. That should be really cool for all those who are looking to craft an immersive haunt. This might be your best bet to do it, so check that out if you guys are looking to craft your immersive game a little bit better. For all your Midsummer Scream news, uh, obviously tune, tune here to Nights of Horror. We'll be updating you guys constantly on Midsummer Scream as well, um, as well as all the coverage that we're going to be doing at Midsummer Scream this July. Looking forward to that. And obviously follow Midsummer Scream on social media. That's where you'll get all the news first, and so you're always in the know of what's going on with our favorite Halloween and horror convention. Now when we come back from our break, we are going to take a dive into some horror news, some more horror news that I found interesting this week, some updates in the horror realm. Uh, as well as um, just kind of shoot the shit and uh, yeah so we're going to come up with uh, Dagger in the Back Vexum I was researching songs this morning for the show uh, and this was one of them so we're going to we're gonna do two for we're going to take a little break uh, we're going to do Dagger in the Back followed by Masters of Deception by Disciples of Death back to back heavy thrash metal here on Nights of Horror Radio. We'll see you right after this music break.
Man, you know what the best part about all the music that I play for you guys on this show is? All these bands are local. Like, all these bands live here in SoCal. Disciples of Death? Long Beach, California. Who knew? Down the, up the, up the, up the, whatever freeway you take to get there. I'm just going to say that. I'm just going to leave it at that. Back here on Nights of Horror Radio, I'm your host, Anthony Zaragoza, and we are talking all things horror right now. Horror news is up on the last half of Nights of Horror Radio, and today we're going to talk a couple things that are, are popping in the horror world. Things of uh, TV shows, movies, pop culture, video games, whatever it may be, if it's horror related, we're covering it. My hair is, what is with my hair right now? That's a little bit better. Yeah, get it all in the back. That's what I like. Kind of like my, I kind of use I I, I, I sort of use the headband you know as this is a headband at the, at, when I play at night, so you know it works out. Anywho, for all my Walking Dead fans, now I I kind of gave up on Walking Dead when they wrote Rick off, uh, when he got in the helicopter and everything at the end of that episode. I, that's when I gave up on the Walking Dead. However, there's still a big fan base for it. They keep doing all these spinoff series all these all the main characters are now getting their own shows walking dead daryl dixon the book of carol is the second season the daryl dixon spinoff series starring norman reedus will premiere on september 29th for all you guys who are the walking dead daryl dixon fans the book of carol is season two and now it's like they just kind of spinned off within a spinoff like this is the spinoff now you just add, like, the Book of Carol, like, is the whole series season going to focus around her? Like, it's not even going to be about Daryl Dixon, so why even call it Daryl Dixon? Um, I don't know. September 29th, coming back, Norman Reedus looks like, it says he's starring in it, so maybe she's just going to be kind of like a supporting role or something. I have no idea. Should be interesting. Who knows? I don't really keep up with The Walking Dead, so if you guys do, let me know if it's any good. Uh, the the one with Negan, though, kind of was like, okay, I kind of may watch that one, so... Um, we'll see what's up. The Strangers, Chapter 1. Now, that just hit theaters, I think, at the beginning of the month. And it's already going to be on digital as of right now, if on June 7th, 2024. If you guys want to rent it or buy it digitally, it is available right now. I will be buying that one pretty soon. I've been wanting to see that. I'm a huge fan of the original Strangers movies, and I heard a lot of good things about this first one. I'm excited to see where they go, so we'll see what happens. Uh, I might be buying that one pretty soon. Who knows? Uh, but if you guys want to buy Strangers Chapter 1, available now on Video On Demand. So yeah, for rental or for your own personal buying. Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Now, we gave our review about that on Monday a little bit. I think it's, and this is just me because I'm biased about the franchise and, and, and the property, but I think it's one of the greatest games ever fucking made. Um, it's so fun. It's so goofy. It's it's everything I wanted with the Killer Clowns franchise. This is the closest we're getting to that sequel and I'm glad that they delivered on this game. Very well put together. Um, the clowns are fun to play as. Humans, I'm still trying to figure out that aspect of things. I feel like the clowns are a little over OP with the humans. However, I do like that you can fight back as the humans and shoot guns at the clowns. Very realistic and, and true to what the franchise was. Um, and it's just expanding lore. Like, Clownzilla fucking talks to the clowns as you, if you play as the clowns. And his voice sounds terrifying. I'm like... Can we get this in a movie, please? Uh, yeah, biased as fuck for real. I told you. The first two DLC packs, though, for Killer Clowns from Outer Space are now available. Bringing a brand new clown skin into the game as well as clown-themed human cosmetics. Uh, available now for the game. I don't know if it's free. You might have to buy them. I may be buying them. Probably not right now, but I'm going to buy them. This clown skin looks sick, though. Let me show you guys the fucking the, the art for this shit. So this is the new cosmetic skins for the survivors. You can dress them up as all the infamous clowns or references from the movies and stuff. I think that's pretty funny. It's pretty cool. Actually, some of them look pretty hard, to be honest with you. I like this one right here on the left. That looks pretty cool with the vest and everything. This one looks pretty freaking cool. The axe looks pretty cool with this one, and she looks pretty cool. This is probably the one I'm not really digging the most, but it is what it is. But the clown. Holy shit, that cosmetic for this clown looks so fucking awesome. This this clown skin looks so fucking terrifying and scary. Um, 
yeah, this is why we need a sequel, because I feel like they can pull so much shit like this off, but I'm glad we have the fucking video game right now. I can survive with this right now. It's, it's, it's really good. And they're already packing in DLCs and skins not even a month into the game, so good for them keeping up to date with the game as much as they can. I'm fucking stoked about it. Uh, I can imagine later on we'll get more fucking maps and stuff, but they really did a good job with map design. Uh, they are very big maps, but it's really cool to really explore Crescent Cove, um, especially because we only saw so many locations in the film, to kind of get to explore it in more detail and to see what else there it has to offer. It's really cool. And on top of that, to see iconic locations is really cool. I wish, uh, I hope for in the future DLC they do a map that's based entirely in the ship because we know the ship is fucking huge. I would love to go through the elevators. I mean, there's so much you can do with this game. We know the ship is there. The presence is, is well known, and I, I, I think they can do more with the ship. So I'm hoping in the future we see a, a map based in the ship. That would be a lot of fun, and I think I would enjoy that. All right, my boy Eli Roth is back. Now, he just had a smash killer new thrasher movie, uh, thrash, or, fuck, I don't even know what I'm saying right now, a killer new slasher movie that just came out last Thanksgiving, entitled Thanksgiving, um, it really was a fun movie, and it brought new, kind of, a uh, new, uh, perspective to the genre, and I can't wait to see what they do with Thanksgiving, or Thanksgiving 2, um, Electric Boogaloo, that should be a lot of fun, but Paul Giamatti and Eli Roth are teaming up for a project, and that project is a hostile TV series. Hostel is the franchise that Eli Roth is famous for. That is probably the franchise that actually helped make Eli Roth the guy he is today. And he is returning to the franchise. He's returning to the roots that, that gave him his his fame. And it it is being transformed into a TV show with Paul Giamatti set to start. Now, I'm excited for this. For one, to be honest with you, I've never seen the Hostel movie, so I'm going to have to watch them to get an idea of what we're going to be walking into. But I just love the fact that I, I'm a huge Eli Roth fan today. I loved everything he did with um, the fucking Crypt TV. That was awesome back in the day. Um, and what they continue to do and elevate Crypt TV, that's freaking cool. Um, and, and Paul Giamatti is just a fucking terrific actor. He's a terrific fucking actor. So to see him take on a horror element, I'm excited to see that. That should be really cool. A new uh, venture for Paul Giamatti, so that should be a lot of fun. And to see Eli Roth go back to his roots of Hostel, that should be cool. My biggest question now is with a franchise that I know is a little gory, who is going to pick this up? This has to be on a streaming service. This has to be something that is not going to be censored or anything. Like You have to go full gore or no go. I'm thinking HBO Max, I'm thinking Shudder, I'm thinking AMC Plus, um, fuck it, Netflix, like, it has to be on a streaming service so it can have its full gore and it, and it be its full self. That's my only request. I don't see a big fucking network picking this show up. You can't pick it up because it would censor so much of what Hostel is. The only networks that I would allow it to be picked up by is FX and... AMC, because you can get away with a lot. Like, Sons of Anarchy, Breaking Bad, got, a got away with a lot. What We Do in the Shadows gets away with a lot. Walking Dead got away with a lot. So, those are the only two, like, network television platforms I would allow Hostel to go on. And even then, that's kind of pushing it. But it has to be a streaming service. Hands down, if you're going to do a Hostel series, you got to go full force gore. And the last bit of horror news we're going to end the show with tonight is a follow-up to Godzilla X-Kong is on the way with the sixth installment in the MonsterVerse being directed by Grant Sputer, who directed a movie called I Am Mother. It was undetermined after Godzilla vs. or Godzilla X-Kong came out um, that if they were going to do a third movie. Now, if you guys watch Godzilla X-Kong, it heavily focused more on Kong. Godzilla was there as more of a side character. But it was more about Kong. They said now, going into this third movie, that they would want to focus that same concept, but on Godzilla. Which, essentially, that's what I want. We haven't seen a good, like a solo Godzilla movie since Godzilla, King of Monsters. I know he's been in just about everything thus far, including Monarch. Um, except uh, Kong Skull, and if you're, unless you're looking at that end credit scene footage. But that's about it. But... You know, and Godzilla's been there, but I, I to get a f story focused on Godzilla again, I think is what we need for this franchise. You know, I mean, I liked what they did with this last movie. There was a lot of fun elements and aspects to it. I think Godzilla minus one was ten times better, but that's just my opinion. Um, 
But I can't wait to see what they do with this next Godzilla X uh, Kong movie. How they continue to expand the MonsterVerse. What monsters are they going to introduce next? What worlds are we going to see next? What you know, I'm excited to see all that. I think the best part about these movies, and what it, it translates so well, especially with kids these days, is the fact that all these monsters are coming out. They're giant monsters. Kids want to buy the toys. I was at the freaking Funko store last weekend in Hollywood. Uh, we were right next door to um, Shake Shack getting food, and I saw a kid with a giant Funko of Godzilla. This generates money. This generates merchandise, all that stuff. So, yeah, if it's going to continue to build your success and you're going to continue to give me decently good stories and great monster fights, I'm all for that shit. Like, let's keep it going. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys so much for joining me tonight on this uh Thursday edition of Knights of Horror Radio, the true episode 5. I owe the boys a true uh, redo for that uh, HHN wish list. I know they, they worked really hard on those to pick, so I want you guys to hear what they had to say. I picked mine as well, and I think we can have a lot of fun as a solo video. So look out on the Knights of Horror. That might be coming to you this summer. Um, but I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in to Knights of Horror Radio tonight. We talked a lot of great topics, a quiet place, a lot of horror news, Midsummer Scream news, Alien Romulus, uh, and the and the list goes on and on and on. We had music by Mortalis, Vexum, and Disciples of Death. We're going to end it here with Putra Sense. I don't know how to say their name. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I'm probably not. Cease to Exist uh, is the track that I'm going to play you next, and that's going to end our broadcast from there. I want to thank each and every one of you for coming out tonight. And for those watching and listening on YouTube, thank you guys so much for all the support. Appreciate it. Be sure to like and subscribe. Follow us on all of our social medias. And I will see you guys next week for another episode of Knights of Horror Radio. Oh,